Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalam ala sayyidil anbiya ilmasalin Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Alhamdulillah and welcome back to another series from our series of compilation of hadith from the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala and this series will be touching the 20 hadith from the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which was narrated by Abu Mas'ud Uqba bin Abi Amir al-Ansari al-Badri radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says inna mimma adraka nas min kalam in nubuwat al-ula that really from among the things that people have found from the words of previous Anbiya, from the words of previous Prophets is such a statement إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاسْنَعْ مَا شِعْتَ The statement was If you feel no shame, then do as you wish So here Rasulullah said in this hadith that these words were found from which was words used by the previous Anbiya which was words which was found from the previous nation and previous Prophets that came before and they used to address their people and they used to remind their people of this that if you have no haya, if you have no shame then do as you wish now Rasulullah sallallahu is telling us this and let us look to the background of why and what is meant by this why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used this aspect to show us and to enlighten us the word used in this hadith haya is a famous word we heard many a time again and the general meaning, just as the meaning I've given in this in this translation, we always translate it to be that of shame, to have shyness, and to be to have no modesty. And if you look at the literal word haya, it has it has these root letters like that of the word hayun. And hayun in Arabic we refer to as that of life. So in other words, a person who have no haya is as if a person has no life, he's as a dead person. So that is the importance of this word haya, how it came from the word hay as a person having life. So having haya and having modesty and shyness and bashfulness is like that of a person having life. So they are conscious of their own well-being. And here in this hadith again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us, he told us about this was something wise which is found from previous prophets. So in society, in our time, in the time of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time, they used to remain faint traces of teachings from the early prophets, from the prophets before him, from the prophetic teaching. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this hadith is reminding us of one of those teachings, while at the same point conveying to us that important message about our haya and about our modesty. And someone may ask that, you know, how does that make any difference? Why is something was from previous previous prophet? Why would Rasulullah Sallallahu remind us about it? And the answer to that is that as every prophet, they all came from the same Creator. They all came from the same Rabb Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and all of the messages are in interconnected. So the message was all universal, because the message is that they were calling towards the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So the concept of haya was not something only from the sins of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why when he reminded the sahabas radiallahu anhum ajma'een about this, it wasn't from his his own statement, but he was also reminding them that this was something found from previous prophets. So it was not something new and invented. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even though he was sent as good character, this was a quality also that was found in his good character. Now the hadith meaning is pretty straight. As Rasulullah Sallam said, if you have no haya, if you have no modesty, then do as you wish. Scholars of a hadith have went in untold hardship and struggles and to give us better meanings and better understanding towards the word, beloved words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam due to Rasulullah sallallahu word being vast in meanings. And even for this, they have mentioned that they have multiple meanings that can derive from the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For among those, one of it is that the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu saying that 
if you have no haya, if you have no shyness, then do as you wish. It is that of a threat. As a, in, in other words, do whatever you want. Do as you wish. Do whatever you want, but be prepared to face the consequences. Whatever you do, always know there will be consequences for that action. And if you have no shame, if you have no sense of shame and no modesty in you, then you may as do whatever you want because it will not concern you. Because you will have no remorse. You will have no concern about your your um, character. You will have no con concern about your taqwa, your piety. You will have no concern about your relationship between you and Allah. As the previous hadith we did with Ibn Abbas when he said that one of the statements of Rasulullah's advice to him was that you protect the sanctity of Allah, Allah will protect you. If you are conscious of Allah, Allah will protect you. So similarly, if we have no concern for our hayah, then how our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even build. How our character will even build. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being sent as the best of character. To complete mankind with the perfect char character. And to help mankind achieve that better character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created each and every mankind. He have created human being in that with that inborn characteristic and a pure nature which we refer to as fitrah. And it's a natural inclination. And each and every human being, our natural inclination when we are born, is that we are always attached towards good things, towards good morals, and towards haya, modesty. So we are programmed, or not, our natural instincts are generally programmed, so that we feel an uneasiness or we feel a discomfort whenever something of good moral are being violated. That is why even as Muslims, when our iman gets strong, we feel that uneasiness when the Sharia uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being trespassed or being transgressed. We feel that uneasiness and discomfort when we commit a sin. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also mentioned in the hadith of what is regarded as a sin is something which causes uneasiness in the heart and you do not want people to see. Similarly, the same aspect of haya. A person who have their haya, who have that modesty, he will feel a shame and a discomfort of having any sort of thing that causes uneasiness to him. Any sort of thing that goes out of good moral and it is violated. So <clears throat> a believer, first and foremost, they are better and they are more in touch towards their inner nature, towards their natural inclinations, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created us with. Haya and modesty is such a quality which for some people it can come naturally. It it be, it is able and it is upon their limbs very easy to carry out whereas for some people they have to work and they have to struggle to be able to instill it into their life and to make it a part of their life but it is possible to revive and to rekindle this quality of higher into each and every one's life just as it is possible just as it is possible for us to ruin it and for us to neglect it and cause discomfort and cause uh, evil effect into our life by foregoing it and Leaving it out and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid but then we'll do as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us first number shit and then we'll do as whatever we please because we will feel no remorse for whatever wrong and whatever violation is being committed in any aspect. Having haya in our heart and nurturing haya in our heart will build our connection closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a matter of fact there are many ahadith which I will close this reminder with that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even Address us and remind us about haya being important a part of a believer. One hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-haya wa shu'batu min al-iman. That haya, modesty, is a branch of iman, is part of iman. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even mentioned another hadith that al-haya does not bring forth anything except that of good. Whatever haya is in, it brings forth good. And whatever haya is not in, it it leads to destruction, it leads to devastation, and it leads person towards wrongdoings. And two main aspects, there are two main aspects of haya that we need to be conscious about. One is our having haya, having our modesty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a Muslim should feel ashamed having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see or know that we're doing something displeasing to Allah, doing something wrong, something haram, something prohibited, or an evil deed. And the second aspect is that we should have haya towards other human, towards our fellow human being. 
it's that it's we should have such a characteristic that keep keep ourselves from harming others and instead we benefit others and we perform action that can draw people close towards us draw people close towards our team and make people comfortable around us but we should our higher towards humans should also be so that we abstain from harming and cause inconvenience to one another so we build our character and having these two aspects of higher will inshallah help us that we can be able to better our life and build this higher and build this modesty in our life that inshallah we will be able to protect ourselves from getting severe consequences and going under the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and help us that we can have proper haya and proper modesty in our life that can protect us from sinning can protect us from harming others and most importantly protect ourselves from indulging in wrong and having the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Forgive us for our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have the understanding of these beautiful words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hatha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.